What's going on, folks? Welcome to another episode of Fishing the Midwest. I'm your host, Sean B. Woo! Just down here chilling, eating some Pop-Tarts. I think this is wild berry. Pretty fruity. Kind of like my good friend, Andrew Flair, whatever his name is. I want to take this video opportunity to talk about a topic that you guys have really been requesting for, at least some of you guys have been requesting for. That topic being my Rodham New Arsenal for 2016. So the first deck that I've got right here is a Cousins Tackle IM8. This is a 703, oh geez. That was a GMB 703 PT. It's essentially a seven foot medium heavy action stick. What this is, is it's kind of like an all purpose rod. That's kind of why I got it. The main tactics that I use this for is reaction fishing, which is kind of strange and kind of goes against the actual specs on this. But I find that this tip action on this rod is perfect for reaction fishing. I've been using it for cranks, swim jigs, chatterbaits, you name it. Paired with the rod, I've got a Shimano Metanium DC. This is the DC7, so it's a 7.0 to 1 or 7.1 to 1 gear ratio. 7.0 to 1 gear ratio. I really suggest if you're gonna try out Cousins Rods, if it's something you're interested in, start with this stick. I'll leave the model in the description below or throughout the video. The next twig that we've got right here is the uh, Brute. This guy really came into play during the Texas Bass Fishing Tournament down in uh, Austin, Texas. This little guy right here is a 6.6 medium action. The model number is a GMB. 652, yeah, 652T. This is like a bank fishing setup. It's good for small poppers, small sammies, jerk baits, little tiny rip baits. I used it for that kind of hot shot rig down there in Texas. It wasn't what I planned on using it for, but it worked great for that. Paired with this, I've got the infamous, the world's lightest thus far, the world's lightest low profile bait casting reel. This is the Shimano Aldebaran 50. This weighs, I believe, 4.7 ounces? 4.7 ounces or 4.9, I don't know. With this 6.6 rod, it's just a feather. And that's really why I could not put this thing down the entire duration of that Texas trip. You know, it's got some strength that kind of kicks in that you don't really realize. I mean, this was battling up against some pretty decent Texas LMBs, which in my opinion, fight really hard. Next stick I haven't gotten to use a ton of, but I'm absolutely in love with. This is a rod that uh, Will over at Cousins Tackle had to sell me on. He didn't really have to sell me on it, but he just kind of was like, all right, dude, try it out. You're going to like it. This is an ultralight rod. You don't really hear that too much in bass fishing industry. This is the Cousins IM8 GP702S. It's a very, very soft stick, and it may not look like an ultralight at the midsection or like the start of the blank, but you really start to feel that, that ultralight action near the tip. So the reel that I've got paired on this is my Shimano Stratic. CI4 2500 FA, most powerful spinning reel I've ever used. The bigger spool capacity really complements the length of this rod. You're gonna be able to sling small baits quite a ways with this setup. So I'm really stoked to continue to fish with this. Oh, what else we got here, man? The next combo we've got right here is a GFS 760-54. I'm still getting used to these model names. This is a flipping stick. This is like your brush, your mat your pads rod. This is the rod that you want to get messy. The reason why I like this rod so much is because of this little foregrip right here. It may seem kind of ugly and unnecessary, but I was talking to Will over at Cousins and he talked me through why they did this, why they put this extra piece of cork right here. The reason is if when you're, when you're getting that fish, when you're setting the hook or when you're flipping that fish in the boat, you have an area to get leverage on that bite or that flip. Instead of grabbing like a random spot in the blank and risk breaking the rod, they've actually put a portion on here where it's basically an okay, like a safe area to grab the blank without risking too much stress on the rod itself. The uh, reel on here is probably one of my favorite reels that I have in my entire arsenal. This is a Shimano Core 100 MG. It's a 6.2 to 1 gear ratio, a little slow for what I like to have and the purpose of this rod is for, but uh, it works. It's a classic reel. It's a classic, classic reel I wish they still made this model, of course, that MG style is really dope. If you're selling any of these, if you have any old ones, hit me up. The fifth rod I want to talk about today is kind of a cool one. As you may be able to tell, it's got a perfect little balance point right there. And what a balance point is, is, is kind of where you're holding that rod. Is it, is it going to balance? Is it going to feel natural in the palm of your hand where you're holding it? You kind of want your balance point to be right about there. You don't want it right here, especially with the reel off, because once you put that reel on, it's gonna add a little bit of weight right here, so the balance point is probably gonna be more or less kind of right here once you, you know, throw that Stratic or, you know, that Daiwa Legless on there. This is a specifically designed drop shot rod. I mean, I'm not really gonna use this for much else, and I do a lot of drop shot fishing. I probably did, God, like 20, 
20% of my fishing last year was drop shot fishing. I love it. It's a super versatile technique up here in the northern waters. A lot of clear water, smallmouth and largemouth love the drop shot rig. So having a rod like this is going to get a ton of use. I've already caught a ton of fish off this rod, not necessarily on drop shots, but other techniques. And uh, after using it, I can just tell it's a drop shot stick. I mean, it really is specifically designed for that. If drop shot fishing is your thing, you want to get a rod like this. <clears throat> All right, so that's kind of my five main sticks that I've been using thus far. I'm going to very, very quickly go over some of the other ones. I may not even talk about them. I might just throw them in like a quick segment and then let you guys kind of take it from there. Thanks for watching today's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you like what you saw today or have any questions about the rods or reels that I mentioned in today's video, never hesitate to leave me a comment in the comment section below. As always, good fishing, and I'll catch you guys next time on the next episode of Fishing the Midwest.